very warm good morning and welcome to session one, actually, <laughs> of these two weeks final conference. Uh, I thought we were uh, session two, but it's really starting now on day two with session one. And we are the team from ZSI, Center for Social Innovation in Vienna, myself, Isa Marschalek, and we have Margit Hofer here and Katharina Handler from ZSI and other colleagues who, who uh, yeah, helped us uh, uh, during the project have already left the project, but we'll see some more signs from them. We have also people from the coordinating team here from EIS, also our coordinator and Shauna who will help us with the chat and Helmut Grünigmeier who will give us technical support. Uh, some of you already saw the slide in the beginning. This session will be recorded because all the sessions um, are provided via the YouTube channel afterwards. Yeah. The social lab approach experiences from first hand. What we really want to give you our experiences from first hand because all our guests here, uh, my team and myself, but uh, other guests we invited have experienced this social lab approach uh, that we applied in the New Horizon project. So we are looking forward to interesting presentations and discussions with you. So how are we going to do that? Uh, now is to welcome an introduction, then we give you a very brief introduction of the social lab approach. Those of you who already attended the opening yesterday saw a bit of that, but we'll uh, tell you a few things more. And then as uh, the Center for Social Innovation team was responsible for one work package, and that was the cross-learning uh, uh, across all these 19 social labs the New Horizon project, had uh, to give you a short presentation on the results, what we found, how all the 19 labs uh, experienced their process. Of course, it's time for you as well to ask questions on that. And then we have a nice a small round of panelists and we also have special guests from not only from our project, but also from another project. And we have two social lab participants of the two uh, social labs that the set design team organized. So we managed two social labs on energy and on uh, in infrastructures and we have uh, from both of them guests here. Finally, a short wrap up and summary and of course an opportunity for feedback for you to our session. But to get started, we would like to have a look on who is here. So we prepared a Mentimeter, uh, you know that already, I think, just use the URL and then enter this code, then you'll see the first slide. And the question here is really, uh, who are you? We have, uh, we have people uh, from the project. So if you are somehow related to the project, uh, our project consortium, or also a social lab participant or pilot host, host to indicate that, and for all the rest, who is not affiliated at all to the New Horizon project, there we provide other different groups like civil society, research, and so on. You'll see. So I think it's already started, and uh, Margit then will show us the results, I believe. Good morning to the others who have just arrived. Yes, you press present then, and then we see it. exactly. Mm -hmm. So for the others who have just arrived, maybe Helmut could again um, um, post the, the code into the chat. We are using menti.com. Please visit the URL and then indicate who you are. Are you affiliated to the New Horizon project, a project partner? And if not, are you a researcher from civil society policy or other? As yesterday we saw during the introduction, uh, the opening, uh, that most of the guests were researchers, seems to be rather similar. Welcome and good morning to newcomers. We are just having a look around who is here using menti.com using this code. And now we even see the code in the presentation. Please just go there, visit via your smartphone or um, yeah, the computer and just tell us which group you're from. And we really wanted to distinguish from the, from the project, of course, that we see we have many, many participants, many partners from the projects, also from other social labs and other work packages. So we have 
half of our visitors already inserted more than half. So our last chances using menti.com and entering this code. Glad to see that so many New Horizon project partners <laughs> are attending. Okay, but still we see most of them are researchers, but also civil society, which is great. And what is other? Maybe you want to, to insert in the chat what other is, just out of curiosity. And the latecomers, uh, please use menti.com, entering this code and then telling us where are you from, from which, uh, which group are you representing? I'm just checking the chat. No, no, no more information on other. Another researcher joining. But you see, and maybe we discussed this as well, uh, um, the social lab approach or in, in our project, of course it wasn't a research framework program, but the, the biggest group of our participants were and are researchers. Hello, <laughs> Ravi from India, also project partner. Hi, nice to meet you. Okay, thank you very much. I think uh, we got a picture. Ah, it's a private company. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Thank you for clarification. It's a private uh, company and business consultation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we missed the business, industry and business we missed here, too. Thank you very much uh, for this. Uh, we continue uh, introducing the social lab approach to you and we have prepared a short video. And here you see also Elisabeth Unterfauner, a colleague of us who cannot be here today. But as I said before, we prepared a short video also for the MOOC uh, we had. And uh, then Helmut will, will start this, this short video and I give you a few more uh, details on the social lab approach afterwards. You will see that there are also presentations on the RIX, the virtual uh, um, exhibition of the project. And here, I'm sure you can find this video as well. My name is Elisabeth Unterfrauner. I'm a social scientist at the Center for Social Innovation. And in, your, in the New Horizon project, we are responsible for bringing all the social labs together to allow for cross-fertilization and learning from each other. A social lab is a term or an approach that was coined by Said Hassan and he argued that in the today's very complex world we cannot apply business as usual approaches for finding solutions to these very complex challenges such as climate change, uh, hunger, poverty in the world and he argues that instead of uh, too much planning we have to get into the doing sooner um, and to also find out what works, what doesn't work, instead of investing too much time and effort in things which at the end uh, turn out not to work. And he also <coughs> underlines that it is important to include very diverse uh, perspectives, um, that you have to work with different stakeholders, so not to try to find solutions for them or for people affected, but together and also to have different perspectives uh, of looking at things differently. Um, and also it is important to experiment with things, um, try out what works and what doesn't. Thank you. And exactly that's the next question. So we learned now about why and, and who uh, introduced this term initially, but now we hear a little bit more about the how. So what exactly is a social lab? So as we heard right now, it's 
interactive, it's experimental, uh, systemic and, and diverse, and also um, uh, intended for learning. But how did we do that? So the labs were really to form a team of people, of different stakeholders collaborating, meaning really working together and to create a process. So this was not just a, a, a singular event, but it was really by a, a long period of time, more than one and a half years, where we engaged in this uh, process of exchange and creating, co-creation, innovating and testing our passionate ideas. So we provided appropriate spaces uh, and uh, implemented social experiments, these pilots, pilot activities, pilot actions, we'll hear more about that later, and always uh, apply these learning cycles as we had this process with these loops that we could look at what we've done and learn from it. Next slide, please. So what were the objectives of the social labs? You know, the whole New Horizon project had the uh, Horizon 2020 research program in focus. So our objective in the labs, um, addressing all these 19 different pillars of the research framework program was to, to discuss the diagnosis of this uh, current RI situation in practice within all these uh, pillars and to find out the barriers or enablers of embedding RI, responsible research and innovation. We discussed that uh, yesterday afternoon. And then to design and implement social experiments to test to overcome these barriers or to test uh, uh, how enablers uh, could work and also to reflect on them uh, and to learn and maybe to scale up and implement further. So that was our objective. And what are now these elements of the social lab? Also, Eric showed this graph yesterday uh, that we created for our first uh, lab workshop to really explain what it is, because many people think a social lab is just a workshop or a series of workshops. Well, there is a series of workshops. In our case, it was three workshops. Some labs even did more or split it into half and half, uh, but it's not all. Uh, the workshop was our means of communication or the main means of communication, let's say. Uh, but then uh, we also uh, co-created and implemented these pilot actions. And uh, while exchanging within the lab, but also across the lab and implementing all these ideas, we've set up a community of practice. Uh, yeah. And it was not only this cross-fertilization across the labs, but also awareness raising. We did a lot of dissemination and also these personal experiences of all our lab participants, us included, uh, and of course, uh, uh, the pilots. And all together, uh, uh, we underwent this learning cycle, as I said, uh, with more than one and a half years. Next slide, please. You see, this is the process in a timeline, and this process more or less looked the same uh, in all the 19 labs. Of course, the intervals uh, were differently, or the size uh, of the lab groups uh, differed a bit, but in general, all looked the same. And uh, uh, you see it on the website uh, of the New Horizon project, 19 labs. Uh, uh, addressing these 19 different topics of the uh, Horizon 2020 program. Yes, uh, and as I said before, uh, we asked all our lab managers to report uh, uh, continuously on what they were doing within their labs, and our team from ZSI uh, did an analysis uh, of what they reported and what they experienced. And now I hand over to Katharina, uh, my colleague, to, to present uh, our results very briefly here. We have uh, also a big report to be published. It's already submitted to the commission and will be available on the website within the next day. Yes, <clears throat> so here are some of the main results and the main findings uh, of the reflection and learning across the social labs. <clears throat> um, what were the aims and the process of the activity? So, um, the main aim was the reflective observation of the social labs uh, while reviewing and monitoring the expected impact. 
uh, we had to do an analytical synopsis of lessons learned across the social labs and uh, focus on learning from experience, but also another aim was to improve the design and the implementation of the active experimentation. And additionally, this experiential learning was reflected in two cross-sectional workshops. And in these two cross-sectional workshops, the leaders of the different work packages, um, as well as the social lab managers and the teams uh, participated. The <clears throat> methodological approach of uh, the report, uh, we had mainly uh, three data sources, uh, the virtual social lab, uh, then especially the social lab reporting templates. So as you heard, all 19 social labs filled in the reporting templates after each of the three workshops. And this resulted in 58 documents overall. And uh, additionally, we had the documentations of the two cross sectional workshops. Uh, we did then a qualitative analysis uh, using uh, the program Max QDA. And uh, we did an explorative and structuring analysis combining deductive and inductive coding approaches. Uh, coming to the main results, uh, focusing on the social lab setups and the methods. Uh, yeah, how the invitation of the participants was done. Um, the 19 social labs recruited each between 15 to 20 persons. And uh, this resulted in a total number of 314 team members. And as you can imagine, these team members were quite diverse in terms of gender, age, region, profession, institutional background, and so on. But we also, because of this diversity, we had all four main stakeholder groups uh, represented, which were research, business and industry, policy and funding, and civil society organizations. Um, but uh, Ilse said already before, um, the, the biggest stakeholder group was, uh, was coming from the research sector, and uh, they often had triple or double roles because they were active also in um, business and industry or in civil society organizations. And uh, the invitations um, were set more or less in a combination of targeted emails to actors, which were based on a selection through stratified random sampling or preliminary network analysis, and also on snowball effects. Um, yeah, uh, how or what methods and techniques were used during the workshops? Um, the workshops were mainly uh, had a length of two and a half or two days. And um, managing team and facilitators co-created methods and processes which were suitable for the lab requirements. They uh, used applied techniques to enforce creative processes, uh, supporting participants, tackling group dynamics and offering network opportunities. And uh, this was done uh, by using a mix of many different formats. For example, World Coffee, plenary sessions, fishbowl conversations, speed dating sessions, uh, talking stick conversations, and so on. And also innovative workshop techniques were used. For example, workshops. Um, workshops are uh, activities or uh, guided discussions while the participants are walking. Um, and uh, they are providing for trust bringing uh, results. And uh, also the intervals between the workshops have to be used to keep the process alive as uh, the limited number of workshops and also the limited uh, length of the workshops was not uh, really enough. Coming to the atmosphere and the art of hosting, uh, a lot of attention was paid to providing a nice and welcoming atmosphere. Um, mostly bright rooms were used with many windows, nice views and appealing furniture and decoration. Also the flexible setting with chairs and tables to be moved for different workshop methodologies uh, <coughs> were ideal for the setting. And uh, informal encounters were a key factor for the social lab teams to grow and to collaborate. And as already mentioned, having the possibility to leave buildings and to go outside uh, was really an asset. 
yeah, coming to the social lab teams, um, there were quite a, diff a, a few different roles um, in the social labs. We had some more or less internal roles, so roles that uh, were uh, uh, that, that uh, staff members uh, took over. So, for example, the social lab manager. Uh, the social lab manager was responsible for organizing the entire lab process. He or she connected the individual social lab with other labs and the project as a whole and was responsible for the constant monitoring and support between the lab workshops. Um, and the social lab manager had an important role in the relation to pilot activities. So he gave information about resources, about timelines, uh, managed expectations, um, uh, focused on background material, etc. And uh, the second internal role was the social lab facilitator. This person was responsible for designing and facilitating all three face to face workshops, putting an emphasis on co creative workshop techniques, and uh, he had to be familiar with multi stakeholder learning processes. He helped the teams to shape the pilot ideas and supported and motivated the pilot host, the pilot host and the teams. And um, as we can see from these two roles, uh, competent staff with professional moderation skills was a prerequisite. And uh, it was necessary for designing the workshops in detail and um, it was needed to offer adequate techniques, which especially were suitable for the co-creative and solution oriented processes. Then uh, coming to the roles um, of the social lab teams. Here we especially had the roles of the pilot hosts. And we have two pilot hosts here today. Uh, you will hear later in the, uh, in the session. Um, so pilot hosts were social lab participants who volunteered for leading and for implementing a pilot action and invested really much of their time throughout the process. Um, then there were the pilot teams and uh, some of the pilot hosts received more support from the teams, others less than needed. Um, but uh, these pilot hosts were only one of the assigned roles of the lab teams. Um, and uh, also the other roles or different roles that varied through the social labs needed to be explained and named in a meaningful way. Uh, because lab participants uh, have to know about the options for which they could sign in during the social labs and the pilots. And in general, it can be said that it needs a room for not predefined roles, which occur along the way and which allow participants to create their own tasks. Um, as you can imagine, this also uh, led to a lot of dynamics uh, in the group. So we had diverse lab participants, which brought with them different sets of interests and value, values. And this led to challenging dynamics and also to conflicts of interest. And these dynamics and conflicts had to be addressed by the facilitators and by the managing teams. This was done uh, mainly by many group forming activities released by the teams. But um, in a few cases, nevertheless, uh, the teams had to decide to not continue the collaboration with participants. Uh, so um, the next focus is on the fluctuation. Um, participants needed to get sufficient motivation to stay active in the lab, but also fresh ideas of newcomers needed to be integrated. In total, about 27% dropped out across the social labs. Um, some reasons were, for example, that they had other duties or time issues, but also that they didn't feel any relation or any involvement to the pilot activities, or they didn't believe in the impact of the pilot activities. Um, on the other side, some participants who couldn't uh, participate longer due to time issues, uh, sent substitutes from the organizations or forwarded contacts to additional people of the networks. Coming to the pilot actions, uh, a very short overview on the two pilot actions. We have our pilot uh, uh, hosts here. So uh, pilot action on renewable energy and know-how, uh, energy know-how from Social Lab 9. 
the aim of this pilot was to create a one-stop shop knowledge base for a sustainable energy use for multiple stakeholders. And here a database was created uh, and filled with relevant institutions at country level. And all this was set up on an open, accessible uh, website. And the other pilot we have, uh, the pilot host here today, was on disseminating RRI in the research and innovation community of the Green Village in Delft. And uh, here the aim was to make RRI a principle guiding the way innovations can be developed and tested uh, and also demonstrated in their experimental real life setting. And this was done in the research community in the Green Village at the Delft University of Technology. <clears throat> Coming to the conclusions, um, yeah, we identified a few lessons learned during the process and during our analysis. Um, so first, it needs flexible structures that allow sufficient responsiveness to, need, to the needs of the group and the process. But it also needs clear outlines and purpose of the activity, as well as related expectations that have to be defined. And it is seen as essential to communicate from the very beginning on expectations, on goals and aims, and on the level of participation. And also a common understanding of the topic has to be addressed. Nevertheless, also the limitations of the social labs have to be made clear and a trust-based environment has to be created. Uh, furthermore, a good documentation on the lessons learned and outcomes of the lab process is important within the project, especially to allow for the exchange and to identify synergies but also to enhance collaboration and to make, their, uh, to make lab participants and the institutions visible. Uh, yeah, summing up, all this requires time. And to help stakeholders participate, it needs expense allowances to especially support uh, civil society actors. But uh, nonetheless, it is still open, still an open issue how to enable further stakeholder groups to participate. Yeah, um, coming to the very last slide uh, on the report, um, out, of, out of all these findings and results, we developed seven main requirements. And uh, so for a fruitful social lab process, uh, the following elements are needed. So first, uh, clear, goal, clear goals and methods and the associated expectations. Then we need an, the establishment of a process with flexible and adaptive structures. Competent and skilled staff guiding through the process. We need openness, creativity and room for experimentation. Uh, an atmosphere of trust for mutual collaboration as a team is necessary, as well as designated roles and support for agents of change. And last but not least, uh, we need the common development of ideas for creating visible effects. Yeah, so these were our main results and findings of the report. Um, if you have any questions now on the content or questions of understanding, please uh, use the chat. Okay, uh, Katharina, I think for now there are no more questions mm -hmm. on the chat. Uh, however, if you still have any questions um, in the next minutes, then please do include that in the chat. Katharina is here, Ilse is here, I'm here, so we can answer them. Um, but other than that, I mean, we have heard now a lot about the findings from the research point of view. But what we would like really today uh, is to hear about the practice from these social apps, from the participants. So we are especially looking for their opinions, the experiences made within the social apps. But before we start, I would like everybody who's not in the discussion round of the participants to turn off their videos as well as their sound, if you haven't done so, so far, so that we see really the participants discussing. Uh, and also again here, if you have any questions, please do type them in the chat. 
Um, Katharina and Shona, they will keep an eye on the chat and uh, they will pop in and, and come in with these questions to be answered by the participants. Okay. Now, um, as mentioned before, what we would like to do today is hearing the practical aspects of this integration of RRI within social labs, uh, meaning we would like to hear about the learnings, your experiences, the knowledge gained, and the insights from these participants. And in order to hear that, we have invited five participants, which I will shortly introduce now. Uh, first, I would like to introduce uh, Miss Aline Fockebacher. Possibly, Aline, you could <laughs> wave so that people would know how you look like who you are. Uh, she's a sociologist working in various roles and many different positions. So I have a list like that here on my, <laughs> on my screen. Uh, and I can't mention all of them, but she's working at the Delft University. She's now retired, but she's still highly active in many different positions. One of them as a risk researcher at the uh, Delft University. And in this role, I think she also joined uh, as a social lab participant. And she's also a pilot host uh, from the social lab infra with the Green Village uh, Delft that you have been introduced beforehand by Katharina. Our second uh, participant, and I'm very happy that she has time because she's a very busy person and she has many, many interests, uh, is Agnes Lorenz. Again, uh, Agnes, sorry if I'm, I um, don't spell it correctly, but I hope I did more or less. Uh, she's based in Budapest. Uh, she's a social lab participant and pilot host from the Social Lab uh, Energy. And from her origin, she's actually a translator, but as I mentioned before, she has many different interests and she's also volunteering in a civic society named Energy Efficient Werkel, uh, which main goal is basically to raise awareness of energy, energy efficiency. And uh, with this background, she actually joined the New Horizons Energy Social Lab as participant and she launched the pilot Energy No Here. Okay, Agnes, have you, uh, can you? wave and say hello <laughs> so we know that your mic is also working hello everybody i'm here thank you great <laughs> then uh the third in our discussion round uh it's a new horizon colleague it's raj kumar Thapa from the genok in norway uh raj is a research scientist and uh, one of his main interests is in um interest in, in responsible research and entrepreneurship and therefore, he overtook the role as a manager of the social lab of FED and also food. And uh, he's also the one that has the entire overview of all the social labs in the New Horizon project, since he's also uh, the work package leader of uh, the social labs. So consequently, I think he has a lot to contribute to this uh, discussion today, since he was managing basically these social labs. Mm, hello. Hi, Raj. <laughs> Good to hear you and uh, great that you found time. Then um, we have also some input from outside the New Horizon project and I am welcoming Peter Bielbauer. He's a senior research, researcher at the Center for Social Systems and Policy of the Austrian Institute of Technology in Vienna. And uh, what is great is that he's the coordinator of the EU project CoChange, who's I think it's still running until uh, 2023. And it's about uh, RRI related practices and institutional change. Um, and he's also having social apps. So I think this exchange is uh, very fruitful. Um, and I think it's a, he's in a great position to talk about this implementation and this practice in RRI in a day-to-day -day environment in day-to-day -day life. And last but not least, you know her, or most of them know, <laughs> know her. It's my colleague Ilse Marshalek uh, from the CSSI. You might know her, but possibly not her background. She's a sociologist uh, with several years of experiences in national and international studies. And she's really our expert in participatory uh, action research and involvement of non-scientific person. And in the New Horizon project she had the role of a lab manager but she was also uh, a lab facilitator and in addition to that she was coordinating this cross lab learning process so um, these are our five participants and i think many uh, all five of them have really a lot to say about the social labs 
And I think what we would like to start with the first question is really uh, how easy or how difficult, depending, was it for you to set up um, the social lab? So, um, Ilse, would you like to start with answering this question? How difficult was it for you or how easy? <laughs> Well, we heard a few things uh, already from Katharina on invitation and recruitment. And I think this is a very, very important uh, um, period and very important phase in the project, which, which sometimes is really underestimated because uh, to find people uh, uh, who are really suitable, appropriate for the lab, but also who are willing to participate and who find finally the time, not for one single workshop, but for more workshops and also for for a longer period uh, of time, is a difficult is a difficult aspect in, from the very first beginning. So I think all the lab teams, managing teams, struggled to get their participants. And as we heard before, like 15 to 20 were envisaged. Um, uh, some labs uh, didn't reach this number, or these numbers declined then throughout the process. But uh, nevertheless, we've also found those who were there are, are the most appropriate ones and are the most interested and engaged ones. So it's not depending on the real numbers, but on, on persons who participate. And I think, uh, and we in our, in our workshops, in our labs, really dedicate much time and, and, and attention to this, to build up a team that, that uh, and I think it's so important for many participatory processes, uh, that we are really, yeah, we really like to be there. We really like the people uh, we collaborate with and like the environment and, and atmosphere there. So that, that um, yeah, we, we, we don't only <laughs> set up just a like sterile uh, working uh, uh, situation, but yeah, find the place and time uh, as a team. And, uh, and we also found and that was um, also part of the results Katarina presented. People have to have an interest. They have to have um, to uh, interest in implementing something. So Katarina mentioned um, they, they are pa they are agents of of change. They really want to change something or implement. Uh, something so they really need much support that was also underestimated much support from the teams but also from from the managers from us uh, and we also found those who could not really relate to a pilot action or could not really find their place in the team they dropped out finally so that's so important that that we create this team that we find this common interest and topic we would like to work on together and yeah help and support each other throughout the process which is a long one as we know now but i i stop here <laughs> so that raj was uh, nodding so uh, um how do you feel about this uh, this question i mean do you agree with ilza what were the experiences from the other 19 of actually from the other uh, 17 social apps. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally agree with Elsa and uh, you also gave previous presentation also we saw the overview of uh, some of the results uh, of the social lab processes and uh, so what I add is like uh, so the most challenges from our uh, social labs experiences was like most uh, challenging thing was first was to bring uh, the uh, right persons uh, on board, I mean, into social, engage them into social lab per se, first one. And then another challenge after, once we able to engage them or participate them into uh, social lab. And the, another challenge was to keep them uh, till the end of the social lab. So that those were the two challenges. And then as Elsa also mentioned, and those who uh, like, I mean, uh, uh, the participants who agreed to uh, participate into social lab workshop first workshops and then many of uh, them even mentioned that that was the eye opener for them because they had not really understood what responsible research and innovation was about uh, because most of them were researchers uh, working in basic research and uh, yes natural science backgrounds right and so they they were uh, really interested and so they found some perceived value benefits 
on by engaging uh, into social labs. So that's why those who are uh, uh, saw the perceived benefits by engaging and then what they did is means they were more committed also and then they are continue they continued till the end of the social lab and beyond also so the many are like uh, elsa mentioned like change makers so many are committed to to still keep on engaging with uh, responsible research and uh, innovation practices into their daily resources and in organizational setting so and those who are uh, not uh, like much committed or not much interested. So, and we also saw the dropouts uh, in between. Yeah. So I stopped okay. there. <laughs> um, good, thank you. I mean, we have two very engaged participants. We have them here. I mean, it's Agnes and Darlene. Now, uh, can I ask you, um, what was your motivation to, uh, to join the social app? Agnes, uh, I mean, for you, it's a very specific, special position, I think, because you're not coming directly from research. So I think uh, you're really an extraordinary example uh, that you joined the, yeah, you are. <laughs> so what was your motivation? Why did you join? And, and why did you manage to, to stay really at the end? Um, my uh, history is uh, it's a bit uh, difficult because uh, I was, uh, I participated in an RI project uh, before the social lab. So I did have some knowledge about RI, and um, and at the end conference of this RI project, I met Maria, your colleague uh, from TETSI, and she introduced me this social lab project. So it 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 uh, it's in 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 the change in the chain process. So this pr process gave me the opportunity to join your project, and. Um, and uh, our um, NGO is a very small civic society in Hungary, in Budapest. And um, it was a special invitation for me because uh, we are so small, like, a, like an ant in a big whole, whole, whole world. So we have, we have some words, we have some ideas, but uh, we are really small um, NGO. So it was a big honor to, to but uh, to have have me here and then to join your process. Uh, that's why I, I stayed uh, until the end and uh, I was curious what what could we do here and how could we how can we make changes and and what is this solution oriented approach what you mentioned before that was my my intent. Okay, very good. Uh, Aline, from a researcher point of view, uh, what was your motivation to join? What, uh... um, my motivation to be a part is because I like the concept, the construct of RRI. I knew something about it. And uh, as Ilse might remember, the first workshop, we had a big discussion with somebody who didn't see anything in RRI because all the parts were already there. So what were we doing here? And I tried to explain to him that science together with the societal uh, point of view, if you bring them together within this construct, there are underlying factors, variables who make it even better. So we had this big discussion. Uh, I think he left, didn't he, Ilse? Uh, in the end, uh, he didn't think that it was any added value, but we in our group thought it was added value. So our ride for me is a construct which I really believe in. So that made me the first one. And the second, well, there were people who um, came in from the gender aspect perspective, which is at the moment very important. And I saw specifically when I did the labs uh, within our green village that the gender aspect is one of the focuses we still need. Uh, the third thing why I was there because uh, my professor Peter van Gelder who made this all uh, uh, possible, he uh, made time for me and he, he created funds. So it was really uh, him also from the safety side and the security side that we came in from the science so we said open access how about it we know about the codes uh, things so we had also the uh, opportunity to look at it from the angle of safety and security okay very good thank you 
Now, may I ask you, Peter, to talk about or, or how, how easy or how difficult is it for you to set up the social apps? And how easy or difficult is it for you to get in participants? Is that an issue for you? Um, I think it is an issue, indeed. Uh, but I should start off with saying a few words about, about CoChange, the project that I'm coordinating. CoChange is, is a bit different from New, New Horizon. Um, we started a year ago and it's one of this batch of projects that are dealing with institutional changes um, that are related to, to RRI. Um, and so, so the goal of the whole exercises of the labs in our project is that we have um, we have uh, we have eight labs in different organizations, and they are focusing on the organizations. So it's not like in New Horizon that they are cross-organizational, institutional, interdisciplinary, transdisciplinary constructs, but they are focusing on on each on one organization. And within these labs, you find the interdisciplinary, um, the interdisciplinarity, and you find um, you find some um, diversity. Um, you also find um, some transdisciplinary elements because some of the labs have started on to to think about the ecosystems. The, the major idea of, of co change is to first start with your own organization, trying to introduce changes. You think about changes and then introduce them and then go to, through the ecosystems of your, of your institutions um, to try to have some effect on, on your institutional environment. And um, what we have also is we, we are a little bit of a mixed bunch. We have, we have a couple of, of research and technology organizations um, and like IHS and, and ZSI and AIT. Um, and we have, we have a couple of universities, two universities, um, Peta is, is, is here, Brugovic, uh, from, from the uh, University of Novi Sad. And we have um, TU Delft also in, in our team. And then we have uh, one, the Dutch standardization organization, which is a completely different animal, works very differently and looks very differently and, and, and needs very different, different approaches when talking to them. And we have uh, two RFOs. Um, in Finland and in, and in Austria, which are part of that. And now, the, 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 as you can see, because of this different starting situation, um, we had also to approach the labs in a different way. So when, for example, at AIT, at the Austrian Institute of Technology, which is where I'm located, um, we have a machine learning lab. So our major task is, is within the AIT, to get um, a grip on the crowd that is doing work on artificial intelligence, which is relatively sizable uh, and over different units. And so you have a lot of interdisciplinarity, but you don't have transdisciplinary elements, for example, at the moment in there. Um, and so we are growing very slowly. We are trying to, to get the different units of different of the, of the house inside into the lab. Um, and at the moment, we, we started off with, with two persons in the lab, and now we are seven persons. And my, my task is until the, until the end of the project to, to approach about 15. So it's much smaller, and it's, we, didn't, we don't have a start um, um, where we start off with 20 people like you did in, in your horizon. And we don't have a manual because our labs look so, so different. Um, so we have other other things in um, other mechanisms and processes, how we try to keep the labs together and to have an interchange. But I think this is another issue and I will answer that issue in, in, in one of the next rounds. Okay, okay, very good. Uh, you were talking about that the lab process looks very different uh, uh, in your project and in others. Now, uh, can, can you describe a little bit uh, about the experiences you made in this lab process. I mean, uh, New Horizons started with quite a lot of people. Um, and then uh, we had actually this challenge of how do we stick the people to keep sticking on the social lab and the RRI. Now, uh, Raj, can I ask you, um, in, in the social labs, how, how did that evolve? Were all the, the social labs the same process or did some people 
lost more people than other ones? How was the drop out and how did you manage to keep them sticking on the social apps? Yeah, yeah, obviously, yes, uh, because uh, different uh, social labs, uh, they have different uh, compositions uh, of uh, participants uh, throughout and uh, uh, different, what you call different uh, numbers of pilot actions they were engaged in, right? And so uh, the main, uh, the common challenges uh, what to keep them in case is like, uh, like uh, we mentioned before also, like was motivation, intrinsic motivation and commitment uh, to the work what they've been doing. So one thing. Another thing, the challenges was like mainly from the time and resource constraint. That was what we experienced in most, I think, uh, overall uh, throughout the social labs, all the social labs, because uh, uh, major, majority of these uh, stakeholders engaged in social labs, uh, uh, they also have other responsibilities. And, uh, and it's also because they had to work on the pilot actions after in between the uh, first and second workshops and second and third works or final workshops as well. And so the, uh, the, the, as I mentioned, like it's the main is the resource, like the time and then uh, other, other uh, constraints also responsibility. And then another uh, thing, what uh, I personally realized is like is difficulties is like, because uh, uh, some of the participants uh, uh, might have thought like, means they don't have uh, enough influential power influence to influence their organizational settings. And what if the pilot actions been produced and how can that be implemented into organizational setting? And uh, if that cannot make impact what is the uh, value of us engaging time and uh, effort into the pilot actions as well so mm -hmm. so uh, main is like this commitment is yes, commitment once they are they see the value also because but other uh, what you call the resource constraints is the major challenges like uh, i have an example of in our social lab uh, uh, one of the part, uh, the few of the participants who uh, proposed these pilot actions of transdisciplinarity online platform to engage the public uh, uh, into innovation system right uh, public as well and also researchers and other stakeholders and so they came up with the brilliant idea but uh, uh, the organizations uh, did not so provide any additional funding so and then ultimately they had to uh, quit that one that pilot action so pilot the idea is still there but they don't have any resources to uh, keep on moving so so those are the uh, uh, challenges what can be seen from surface Okay. Yes. Thank you. Ilze, um, what were your experiences in this lab process? Do you have similar experiences? I think so you I like <laughs> No, I should not be muted. You can hear me? Um, I'd like to add on the on the differences and on the structure of the labs. Just um, for explanation, what we worked out in the project was a kind of generic concept, a generic design workshops but of course each lab team each facilitator designed their own workshops so they look completely different although uh, we created um, similar ideas and and implemented innovative techniques however the workshops differed a lot and uh, I think it's really interesting to to start with the own interest of the persons who are there and uh, of course or I don't know, maybe it's easier when they come from the same institution. Um, maybe not. Uh, in our case, they, were, they didn't even know each other. They were just, the, they had the uh, same interest uh, that was like research infrastructures or energy coming from different backgrounds. But other social labs, like for example, the GRC uh, or FED, they, they had a complete different structure or Marie Curie, uh, uh, you know, so that was a, a different kind of group, a different lab team they worked with. And accordingly, uh, of course, uh, the labs uh, differed and, and the actions uh, they carried out. But um, nonetheless, nonetheless, also in our two labs, we started uh, after introducing RI, we really started with the first question, how might RI be relevant for you in your own institution, in your own working environment. So first of all, we presented a diagnosis of what we have learned in, in, in this research uh, program 
So we, we screened the, the working program, we screened evaluation documents, uh, and, 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 and you can find the, the deliverables all, all on the website. A huge screening um, took place in the first phase of the project. We presented this diagnosis to our lab participants, and then we asked them, uh, what you see here, what is relevant for you? And if you then implement RI aspects, how, how would that support your work or hinder your work? And with this, we started and discussed within the teams. And based on these first results, we started creating uh, the pilot actions. And that was a very creative, a real creative process, you know, with not only sticky dots, but really many, 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 many things to create something. Uh, finally. So um, maybe this is just for, for explanation how we did that. And in every, everything concerning differences between labs, there is Joshua and Anna, the team from Work Package 8, they had a look at, at, at that and will also publish their report. So you can find many more details in their work as well. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks, Isa. Can I ask our lab participants, so uh, uh, Agnes and Aline, how, how did you feel about this approach? I mean, starting to, to work with a team of people that you don't know and uh, uh, being included in this process as Ilse was describing. Um, how was that for you? How did you feel about this? That was very interesting. <laughs> I really, really, I didn't expect it. It was... Uh, um, I mean, I thought there would be all the same people and it was great to have other people. I've got scientists all around me all the time. And there were people who were there without, with, with a complete different uh, mindset. So that's very good. And uh, what I liked most, all three workshops uh, most, was um, the tools they used. And I know all the other participants in the labs also were very fascinated about the way uh, uh, Ilse and her companions uh, presented the tools within the overall uh, goal we tried to reach. Aline, Aline you're muted. Oh, this is great. Well, anyway, uh, it enhanced, sorry about this, uh, it enhanced the whole uh, uh, results of the workshops, at least with us, it worked very uh, cohesive, it worked very relaxed and therefore we co-created a better value result, I know for sure. Uh, uh, chapeau to Ilse and her uh, teams. Very good. How was that for you, Agnes? Oh, uh, we had some issues at the first uh, social lab because, uh, because as we formed our teams, uh, it turned out that uh, somebody uh, has some visions uh, which, one, uh, which he wanted to um, put on everybody's concept or how can I formulate politely? So uh, there were uh, leaders in our teams, and uh, and and at the, at the first uh, failure or some issue, um, he he left our group, and uh, we were we were there without uh, without a leader and without a concept because uh, the our project uh, was pilot project was not that project, but we uh, we um, worked on later. So uh, we had some difficulties in, in the team dynamic, but uh, at the end of the, of the day, I can say uh, everybody contributed to, to, the, to the project uh, with, with the, their ideas and, and their uh, profession from, from home. But yeah, it turned out lately that uh, it, 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 we, we can work together uh, despite of our differences. Mm -hmm. Uh, Agnes, don't think that everything went very smoothly. <laughs> <laughs> I might give the impression of that, but that's not, I mean, we did have our uh, Hubbles and we did, mm -hmm. have, uh, but like you, so I feel the same. But I think <laughs> it was, in the end, it was a great success. So that's the main point. Yes, so yes. yes, but it, it, it was very important that uh, our, our dictionaries, our language books are so different. 
that uh, are my 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 dictionary is completely different as uh, yours as a researcher for example so we, we should we should um, put it together and and create a whole new dictionary and uh, to, to understand what it means for you and it should mean the same for me and uh, from different backgrounds it's, it's a very difficult question and a very difficult task well that was the good thing about having in the green village having the innovations you have something concrete to talk about if it is a race car or it is water dripping but you've got something in common that's why civil society which was also invited in our project uh, could uh, um, uh, communicate with us through the artifact uh, and that made it uh, more attractive uh, yes, but, it, but it's understand yes but it's uh, it's very interesting that uh, who will be the leader you as a researcher who, who have a big knowledge and, and uh, historic background and everything else, or me as an NGO uh, representative who has another profession and it, it is only my hobby and I have some visions and I want to change the world, okay, but it's, it's uh, very naive in, in uh, every aspect. And, and if, it, uh, if I lead the team, then the whole team will be very different. As, um, if, if, you, if you lead the team, it will be more, more profession, so to say. So it, it was very good to uh, experience. Um, it, it, it was a very good experience to feel that. Great. Uh, thanks for, for these insights. I mean, my next question <laughs> would be, I just, wanted to, I just wanted to add also, as Agnes was mentioning before, when you have dominant voices or some, someone who, who has his own vision uh, already, I think it's so important that you uh, co-create these ideas, that you really collaborate on ideas. And uh, for us, it was uh, easier that we had the chance to have like three pilot ideas. In another project, I have to come up with one idea, which makes it really much harder. And here we could really work on ideas, uh, um, not only addressing this, this, um, this issue we identified, but also we were asking from the very beginning, who will be the pilot host of these activities? Who is able to host it? Uh, initially, at the very beginning phase uh, of the project, we called them sponsors. But then it turned out you don't need to be a sponsor per se. But we, we, we then um, yeah, introduced uh, the term of uh, hosting a pilot. And we asked for each idea we voted on and, and really we tried to imply democratic processes here to, to, to find a selection. Uh, and we asked who is going to host it? Uh, and this is so important that you, you're not, uh, you know, like um, um, rule everybody out yeah, of your idea, but uh, really find your idea, find your team for your idea and, and follow your own idea. And that's, that's, I think, a big advantage in a social uh, lab that this is um, result open, so to say. And, and those who came from the very first beginning to the lab to to, to implement only their idea, they didn't stay long, I would say. Okay. Just, if, if I could also say something, um, it's it's very funny. After I've said before that 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 our project co change is so much different from your horizon, I can I can relate now to so many things that that you have been saying in the last ten minutes, because for example, I had I'd really to to to. To smile when Ise was was talking about about this 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 question of you know of getting um, a common understanding and and trying to find at the very beginning um, to see what actually RRI is to introduce people and also what what it then concretely holds in in um, holds for people why would would they join a workshop on RRI? Um, I mean, there must be a reason why they do that. They must have an incentive of some sorts. And, and um, we had exactly the same problem. Um, and we solved it in, in two ways. One was we, had, we, had, um, a, we have a series of meetings, which we call the forum, the forums actually, because it's more than one, um, throughout the project in which we tried to, to, um, to establish 
something like a, a common language, which was the second thing when I had to laugh when when Agnes was talking about uh, was talking about this, these dictionaries that we all have in our heads and which are also forming the possibilities of how we can express ourselves, how we think, how we see the world, and all these things. I mean, we know about that abstractly, all of us do. Um, but it, it's always so interesting to see that in action. Um, and in, in, in the second process that we have this, um, on top of these forums is, is the meetings of the single lab. And um, in our lab, in the machine learning lab at EIT, um, we, have, we have developers in there and social scientists. And so we had the problem, um, we had the first forum meeting and we had established a common vision. And we had even established a roadmap and we had established all kinds of things that on a formal level would make it possible for us to sit together and know why we are sitting together and everything. But then we were sitting together and then um, the software developer says something and I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> and, and vice versa, you see? So we, we had to, de to develop this, 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 this common language, this dictionary that you have been talking about. And, and it's, it's, it's very interesting that you today tell me that we have to talk about what RRI is and uh, what it holds for you as a person, because yesterday we had, we had a lab meeting and the question that I had for, for everyone in there was, um, what actually do you think, what kind of institutional changes in the, in the mind and spirit of RRI would you actually think could we advance in our two units? So for the first time in the lab, after half a year of discussions, we would talk really about what we would like to change because until now what we did was trying to establish who we are, how we see the world, what it is what we are doing, what it is we are in principle interested in. And um, I was applying things like uh, um, the STIR method of, of Eric Fischer, um, who's, who's also been part in this part of New Horizon and who's going to talk about it, I think which was exceedingly helpful um, in understanding what kind of problem sets do software developers have when we are creating artificial intelligence technologies. And only now we are at this, at this level where you say you have started off with your, with your labs when you were sitting together and saying, come on, what is RRI? What is, what is it we are talking about? Why are we doing, why are we engaging in RRI? What is, what is the strength of it as Aline has been putting it? Um, what makes us interested in, in, in doing all of that? Yeah. And I really think Eileen can add here from the Green Village because there were these innovators and... <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you see, we, we, had, we had exactly the same, same problem in the beginning. Uh, I, I was not the host in principle of anything. We would uh, start with uh, a project in Denmark and uh, uh, the leader there um, in the end didn't quite grasp what the meaning was and that it actually uh, you don't have to put a high goal you just start and that is the strength of this social lab you start by you know what are we talking about what would be the influence so we had a very small goal in the beginning and then uh, unfortunately the lady who would do the Denmark project with windmills uh, uh, disappeared uh, uh, into the blue. So uh, not wasting uh, a social lab in this age. Uh, I stepped in um, since Green Village for me is a, a very uh, a dear project and the projects there with all the innovations are so very uh, challenging. So, but I saw when I was at the Green Village that all the innovators, and they're different from the scientists. Uh, let, let's make it very clear that the project we did, innovators are party scientists, but at that moment they are so focused about what they are going to invent that all these things of are arrive for them. Okay, Arlene, it's good you want to do that. So awareness about RRI was our main objective. Um, during that whole period, we had some other uh, hubbles, like people uh, 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 didn't have time anymore and didn't want to participate because of uh, uh, it took too much time for them. So we had the same problems uh, 
as you all told. But in the end, everybody kept focused that we wanted to be awareness within these uh, innovations. And these, they were all guys, so then you pour uh, girls in there. So that was one of the underlying uh, objectives I had myself being coming from a uh, global NGO too. So that was what we had. Is that, <laughs> did I give some insights now? <laughs> okay. I, I, I see Peter also nodding, uh, Agnes, I think also agrees. I think uh, we, we just discovered that uh, we have, although the projects are totally differently set up and the social apps are differently set up, uh, there are quite a lot of similar tasks and challenges, really. Um, now, I have one other question. I mean, from, from your experience, and you did all these social app process, what were the outcomes and the effects on you? So how did it influence you? Um, and what were your learnings, basically? Um, Eileen, would you like to continue? <laughs> um. Let me say that the impact on uh, TU Delft, which already has quite a lot uh, of aspects of ROI within their uh, integration and ethical approach, which was within my uh, faculty, um, was enhanced. I mean, uh, it was more discussed so that at, a, at an institutional level, it had some impact. Also, there is uh, one of the VTI that values uh, 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 section has a, at this moment a, a postdoc on RRI, so it is uh, uh, gradually coming into it. And within our safety and security section, we discussed uh, uh, these kind of aspects. But again, um, uh, Ilsen knows that that my objective myself was to get a kind of construct which uh, enhanced each other. And I was rather disappointed to see that within uh, Europe, 20, uh, Europe uh, uh, the, the follow-up of uh, H2020, um, there is not this cohesive and this coherent uh, uh, construct anymore. So uh, that was for me uh, very important. Okay, thank you, Eileen. Uh, Agnes. Um... I, I have personal outcomes and effects because I'm only a volunteer. Um, so the responsibility was for me a big, uh, big, big. Um, so it was really important for me from early beginnings. But from this RRI uh, methodology, I learned that not in my personal life, but in my profession or in my hobby, I can responsibility uh, implement is implement responsibility in every way that I can. So if I say yes to a social lab, that it's my responsibility to stick to the end and to, to stick on this project and and hold on to it and at, at the very end, this is responsibility too. And if I have plans with the, our NGO, then then I should implement RRI methodology too. So I should uh, ask and I should do, so I should do everything what I can to RRI is not just only a research and innovation process, but in my, um, our whole life, a, a methodology to be. I, I can I, I just add something, Agnes, I feel exactly the same. It creeps, it creeps into your personality. You can't look at anything anymore. We're doing an energy transition project within our community. Mm -hmm. And I feel myself approaching it with the RRI at the back of my head. I can't yes. do it anymore without it. Hungary is at the, at the gate of energy, energy liberalization. And we have all, all the laws and, and everything's changing in the energy efficiency and, and, and in the green energy industry in Hungary. And it is, it's, it's very good to see that they have to learn this RI aspect and they, they have to learn how to think in RI aspect. But uh, it's, it's, it's a huge, huge impact. But they don't see and they don't have the word. The researchers have, uh, so everybody's going in a different di direction in Hungary. And it's, it's, it's horrible to see that they don't think RI-ish in Hungary and the Hungarian government, but in NGOs 
everybody can work and everybody's aim to work like this. And it's, it's good to see that, uh, that the, the small uh, NGOs and the small groups who wants to work on it, then they, they can and they see responsibility and they see every, every innovation you see and you want to do, you have to be responsible and you have to work with, the, with those who, want, who, who, who wants to, no, sorry. So responsibility underlined to the reason. Uh, I would also like to add here because we, from the cross-learning perspective, uh, uh, we saw that people really um, learned on all levels or could, could take home something on all levels. So we saw it on the personal level, but also institutional level or on the level of this topic, the work program pillar, so to say, and sometimes on national level. But of course, the, this personal level is so important. And I'd like to add here because uh, Aline, you said uh, our first pilot host, she was disappearing. Yes, she was disappearing as a pilot host because she, she didn't have this institutional backing. Yeah, so it was too much for her. But she didn't disappear as participant. She came back in workshop two and workshop three. We were all surprised that she was there. And she gained a lot personally, so she wanted to work, uh, to continue working um, on, on a personal level, to spread the word afterwards, to influence her institution afterwards. And I also like to emphasize on the institutional level, or on the other levels, let's say, it's so important to create this visual effect. And here we come back to this really old but still valid concept of transdisciplinary research, where we have this in their set, so we have this real life project and we need to implement something to make it visible, uh, to make the participatory process visible, to make the, the impact visible, the action visible. So uh, I, I still think that pilot actions, um, and you will see the booklet, we got introduced this booklet yesterday, yeah? really, I don't know, 68 different pilot actions have been carried out and I think they have an impact in, on, on these different levels. Yeah, I, I also like to add on that one, like, uh, so uh, from our experiences, like, uh, so social lab, uh, uh, social lab, it's uh, like for the participants, uh, uh, like heterogeneous perspectives uh, and uh, uh, expectations can be shared, right, reflected on these uh, uh, expectations and perspectives. Uh, also like a uh, social uh, lab, like uh, Elsa said, like, uh, so it's uh, the changes should comes from individual, of course, that's institutional or organizational motivation and changes also necessary to support that one. So uh, the commitment, if uh, individually, the individual from individual prospect level, like, I mean, if they are committed, like, uh, so they would not give up uh, uh, the, what you call, so they keep on trying like I gave before one example of uh, the pilot accents so uh, the researchers she is, is still uh, trying to uh, find some way to funding uh, the resources to accumulate resources to, to really take that uh, into practice so uh, that one and also um, the impact uh, can be seen when it's really implemented and some of our pilot actions being already implemented in though in uh, like a macro level and so it's uh, it's getting off i think uh, so so impact would be seen after sometimes actually it's too early to define the impact uh, right away now so just we completed uh, the pilot uh, activities pilot actions and so they're taking off slowly so many of them have implemented they started uh, implementing as well yeah uh, I, I think these are very nice uh, and good closing words uh, having this vision of it has been implemented but it will take some time really to become really very very fruitful and distributed on a, on a broad level also. Um, I think we have to close here, although I, I, I'm sure there would be quite a lot of many other different insights and, and, and learnings that uh, would be interesting to share. However, we are limited uh, in terms of time. Now, Katarina and Shana, is there some, uh, some really burning question in the chat? Um, One thing was that Anne published her report 
hers and Joshua's report. I think it's a very interesting uh, reading material to get more insight, uh, especially on the differences between the labs, how they organize the processes and what they develop. And I'd like to add on these um, pilot ideas and also what Raj said um, at the end. Um, and this is also uh, already an idea coming from the transdisciplinary research. Uh, and we did it in New Horizon as well. Uh, to get things started, um, you don't not only need the team and the support and the idea and the vision where to go, but also um, uh, financial support. And we called it uh, in the transdisciplinary research, you call it seeding money. Uh, and that's what Raj said, when you start with a small project, uh, you'll be able to get more money, more support, more funding. And in New Horizon, we didn't have much, but at least we could offer something. Uh, our pilots, uh, as I said, it was not much, it was um, an average like five to 7,000 euros only but still people could travel people uh, could um, rent a room and do things like that and yeah and or or um, buy a web pro as a pay a web web programmer or things like that so yeah this could have then these ripple effects if you start small with a small project and then can ask for other money or uh, apply for other funding yeah okay and, uh, can I uh, can I add one thing which I, I very quickly, uh, which I uh, uh, thought it was, I mean, yes, the ones who were doing the work, etc., they were funded, uh, they, they could go uh, anywhere. But what I missed uh, in the end is um, I would have loved to give some kind of recognition. Uh, we got a diploma or anything, but I would like to have some recognitions of the ones who did the real work, which were, in my case, the three innovators, uh, and their teams. So the end, not the end users, but the ones who made it uh, possible, at least in, in, in my project, uh, should have had some kind of recognition, maybe through me, but it has to come from higher up. That was just one of the uh, uh, recommendations. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, one thing I would like to add, um, because it, it has something to do with what you just have been discussing. Um, we are currently, as we are speaking, we are trying something out. Um, uh, we, are, we are having a, a call for innovative RI ideas. So what we are trying to do is we are trying to raise interest without, uh, outside the RI community and um, to to um, support people who have ideas which are RI related in a very broad sense and to try um, to, you know, the, the, third, the three winners of this, of this call, they will get recognition, social media, homepage, invitation to meetings um, and stuff like that. And, and the first thing, we, you know, also approached actively some people um, in the in the AI community in Austria because I thought it would be interesting to have to have also some of them there. And these were NGOs um, that I'm talking about. And the first question that I got was, <laughs> "We are an NGO. We all volunteers. Uh, we all running on a shoestring budget. If we have any, can we can we have some money for for doing work?" And of course, this was the one thing that we did not have put aside. We, we put aside travel money, we put aside uh, all kinds of stuff and, and, and work that we are going to invest. But it was very complicated, and yes, you know it is, in, in a European project to put aside for a third person with while the project is running that you don't know from begin on, um, to put aside this um, funds for people um, that are not in the, in the proposal. You can do that. There are, there are ways of doing it, but they, they are so complicated. Um, so there is, there is an issue for the European Commission, I think. Um, and there is an issue perhaps to think if you're, if you're doing a project proposal and you're working with people outside the community, with people from NGOs, for example, to, although it is very complicated, perhaps really think about putting aside some funds. I I think seed, seed money, as you have been talking about, would be really sufficient 
to get something going. Um, and small money really can make a difference there. I didn't think about it when we made, when we wrote the proposal. I thought it's just a waste of, a waste of time and energy. Now I think differently about it. Okay. Huge recommendation at the end of the session. Uh, we will continue actually with this topic, uh, this how to engage the stakeholders in research practice. Uh, I hope that Anna and Joshua will pick up this uh, topic in the afternoon. It starts at uh, two o'clock with the same link. Uh, thank you so much for your time and, and sharing uh, your insights and your learnings. Uh, I think this was very important to hear and I hope that uh, everybody who was listening also learned uh, on social apps, how to do them, and what to look uh, for if you really implement social apps in RRI. Well then, thank you so much, uh, and we close the session here. Well, Mumei, just a moment. Oh, okay. <laughs> we, thank you very much. We want to gather your feedback as well, So, but really thank you for, for attending this session, and a special thank really to Aline and Agnes as our lab guests. Thank you for that, for staying with us for such a long time, really I highly appreciate it. And also for our external guest, Peter Wiegebauer, and of course Raj, our work package leader and, and colleague in managing the labs. Thank you for organizing this session. And uh, for the end, uh, we'd like to ask you for your feedback. We are just in time, again, uh, using the menti.com, uh, the same code and just yeah, giving us um, a few words, how you like the session, what you like to share with others, what you take home from this message, uh, from this session, sorry. Uh, and we already collected a few things in the chat, but just please use Menti, uh, Mentimeter. And yeah, thank you all for staying with us. Thank you all for sharing. We'll have another eight days to go. So hope you find some more interesting sessions 